George the Fourth has always been a huge fan of your music. George the Fourth, where did you first run into Hugh? Well, my goodness, I think uh, Old Flames was my introduction to uh, Hugh Moffat, and uh, it was a version by Joe Sun. By Joe Sun, that's right. Um, which I always thought was kind of like the definitive version, other than your own. Well, Joe set the set the standard, and everybody else uh, kind of followed what he did. But it's, uh, it, one of the amazing things about that, George, of course, is the song was a was a top ten record for for uh, Joe. Uh -huh. Then two years later, the same song by Dolly Parton was a top ten <laughs> record again. Now that doesn't happen very often. That's so right. That's yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, we were on a, a festival in Holland, in Holland together. Floralia. And is it Osterhout or Oster, Oosterhout? Oosterhout. Oosterhout. Yeah, the way, the way they do that in Holland is, that, you know, to make a long O, they just put two of them together. If it's one O, it's ah. If it's two O's, it's O. It's real simple. But it looks funny to us. Well, it's um, in this little town called Booster House, and uh, it's the Floralia Festival. They have it every summer over there. And yes, and, there are flowers. Yeah, and in it in a, it's a big flower garden. That's right. That's right, right, right downtown. And uh, Hugh was the star of the show over well, there. When, when I was there. No, no, how true can that? I was your warm-up back. <laughs> but I had a chance to hear Hugh Moffat. Uh, and full force, and he did a, a lengthy set, and every song on it was a hit for somebody. And, uh, but I'm, I'm so uh, pleased that you came in to the Handy Hardware Store, and I know George and Ben and his friends are grateful to have you here. I'm proud to be here. Now, there's one thing. Did you have a very strange car that you toured in or lived in for a while years ago? Which one? <laughs> we were talking about one night at a coffee party. Yeah, that's probably the uh, the '69 Cadillac Victoria hearse. Oh. And you lived in the car too? Or you toured all around? Well, America? you know, we don't talk about that a lot. But, uh, you know, there, were, there were times there were there were little gaps, you know, in the itinerary when there was uh, there was like no hotel, and, and you know, where did you sleep? You know? Uh, I guess what I'm getting into is so Nobody cool about, bothers you sleeping in the back of a hearse. I got to tell you. <laughs> that, that was uh, in Nashville. What year would that have been? Because it was a very interesting time in yeah, Nashville. Yeah, I think it was about 1911. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was more like the 70s, the 80s. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Well, you know what they say? If, if, uh, if you were in those, those years yeah. and you remember them, you really yeah. weren't there anymore. <laughs> Anyway, it's so cool because it was a time of outlaws in Nashville. I mean, you knew a lot of the outlaws and Johnny Cash, of course. Well, I, I knew a lot of, of, of people who were like me who came to Nashville because uh, something really exciting was happening here. Um, as, I, as I put it, uh, we came here because of people like Willie Nelson and, and uh, Roger Miller and Chris Christopherson. And, uh, by the time we got here, they'd moved on. All right. <laughs> but uh, but what we found was each other. Yeah. And there there are a lot of folks in that that group. So a lot of them you don't know. Really brilliant people. But you will you will know people like uh, Don Schlitz and uh, Guy Clark, Towns Van Zandt. Can I interject something yeah, right here, real please quick? Please do, Mike. Um, I, I remember that that uh, I used to play with Steve Earle, and Steve Earle told me that. When he first hitchhiked to Nashville, uh, and he was like 17 years old, the first person that he stayed with was Hugh Moffat. Yeah. You put Did him he, in your hearse? No, I, I took the hearse. He got the couch. <laughs> that was Michael Kells for the question. That's his first question and answer. How about Michael Kells? <laughs> Watch out, David's father. Michael Kells. Hugh was telling me something very interesting before the show we, we met back there in the aisle way, and he was telling me about a dream he has about going back to get some more education, and the reason why. Would you would you like to share that with the folks? About well, so this is uh, this is not uh, rehearsed. <laughs> this was not, but uh, yeah, 
be careful what you say to people when you're about to be on the radio show. <laughs> no, I've, I've had a temporary job, uh, day job, for uh, 15 years. Uh, and so I, I finally decided that I've had it long enough, so I'm, I'm giving that up at the end of this year uh, in order to, uh, to write again. And uh, what, what George is talking about is that one of my, uh, my plans, assuming that I can pull this off, is to, is to go back to school and get a Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing. And what that will do, of course, it'll, it'll hone my skills in some of the writing that I do, but I, I'm not as experienced at it, like playwriting. I write musical books and that kind of thing. Uh, but also, hopefully, uh, because of what you, the kind of credentials you have to have to do this, uh, I would like to teach writing and songwriting at the university level. Uh, because I, I, I've, uh, I've done a lot of seminars on songwriting, and I believe in it. And I'll tell you a couple of the rules about songwriting. The first rule is there are no rules about songwriting. <laughs> if you can sing a song, you can write a song. So all the stuff that you have to learn about songwriting comes when you're not happy with what you're writing. So I call them tools, not rules. And a tool is something you reach for if something's broken. But you leave it in the case if it ain't broken. So don't let anybody ever tell you you have to know anything to write a song. You may have to know a lot to finish it or to get it where you want it, but to write it, you just write it. You have a song in your heart, you sing it out, that's writing the song. Wow. You love it, and enjoy having a voice.